So we are well into the January transfer window now. We've had a couple of setbacks in terms of transfers, but we've had absolutely zero setbacks in terms of results. So following on from that UVA game in the last episode, we've played three times and we've won three times. The first of which was away from home against Cagliari. Tom, uh, Diego Almada had put us in front six minutes in and that's how things stood for the rest of the game. A pretty even game, but we got away with this one. We then went away from home against second place Napoli and won one nil. Moise Keane on the score sheet this time. A game where we probably deserve the three points as well. Uh, this team is really starting to click with the three up top. And finally was a 3-1 home win against Bologna, Carlos Alcaraz, Adam Hlozek and Eldor coming on, on a rare time and getting himself a goal. They scored in the 83rd minute but it wasn't enough and that sees the Serie A table looking like this. We are second in the league, one point behind uh, Juve. I was about to see a zebra there, never mind. But the more interesting thing is we are six points clear from Sassuolo in fifth. And that's where we're going to be keeping our eye on. The aim now is to challenge for that Champions League spot. The league title probably a little bit beyond us in terms of the quality of play we've got. Maybe not. Depends how well our run goes for the second half of the season. But Champions League, I would love it. Hlozek, top scorer. Best average rating. This guy is an absolute superstar. We might have a bit of a struggle to keep a hold of him in the summer. In terms of the transfers then. Um, we've got a lot of 16-year-olds coming in. We've went on the approach list. We went for pretty much a lot of high potential youngsters. I'm not sure if they're high potential yet, but I think they're going to be high potential. And even if they're not, they're going to come in, sit in our under 18s, hopefully develop at the club and give us a nice foundation of youngsters coming through who could potentially make it to the first team squad. A lot of Danish players, actually. <laughs> Most of them are Danish, to be quite honest with you, but I don't mind that. We'll bring them in. They're only on like a couple of cares here and there per week. And uh, we start the conveyor belt. This is what we do on every single save. Only one confirmed incoming so far is Joe Resend. He is a striker for Benfica. He looks pretty well-rounded at 18 years old and he's apparently got very high potential. I am actually going to see how much they would want for us to bring him. Eight grand to bring him in now. I absolutely will do that. Uh, we'll probably look to get him out on loan pretty quickly. He's sitting in our under-20s now. He's more than capable of playing Serie C football, maybe. Yeah, he's currently operating at Serie C level, so might as well try and get him some first-team football as he's not going to be impacting our first-team squad just yet. In terms of the setbacks, it is this man, and I'm still baffled as to why he has decided to join Ren. Well, they're sitting third in Liga, and that's fair enough, but we are sitting second. They're not in any continental competition, so basically, I offered Carlos Alenia 54 grand per week and an important player role to join uh, Genoa. He accepted that, that was fine. Ren came in after... I wasn't too worried about it, to be quite honest with you. And then he ended up accepting their terms. 40 grand per week, so 14k less, and a squad player status. I mean, how? Why? Surely we're a similar level in terms of reputation. We're doing similarly in each other's respective leagues. Serie A is surely a little bit more uh, better reputation than Liga 1. And we were offering an important player role. I would have brought him in in January. He would have slotted in that central midfield role and sell him Melagioni. But uh, it's not a base, so we're still on the hunt. So we do still have 11 million quid left, 116k per week in the wage budget. And there is a couple of players who I would really like to sign, but it's just not possible right now. If the board are going to be appearing, they ask for Esposito. This is one of the guys who I would like to go for. Unfortunately, I've already made an offer just to sort of see how much uh, PE or K would be interested in selling for. 60 odd million. <laughs> so it's probably not going to happen. But ever since we started playing the three up top, I've been on the look for a natural false nine. And I think Christios Edzolos will be the man. So I'm going to try and unsettle him for the rest of this transfer window and for the rest of this season in the hopes that we can at least look to make an attempt to sign in him in the summer. And Esposito, we went back in for him again. And at £22 million, the board says we're only willing to play 17. So they pulled the plug on the deal. We could have had Esposito in the squad right now, but uh, our board are a little bit tight. So anyway, that's enough of the transfer stuff. We'll go on to the deal. We've decided to come back for the Lazio Fiorentina games. Both away from home, both going to be challenges, especially that Lazio game. They seem to have our number this season. So I'm hoping with the three up top, we might be able to do a little bit more damage than we have done previously. So this will be the lineup for today's game. Sport Yellow in goal, Giglione, Anel, David Carmo, and Ehern Munoz in the defence. Belmont, Melodroni and Alcaraz in the midfield with Thiago Almada, Hlozek and uh, Moise Keane leading the line. 
Lazio, I think they're doing pretty well in the league. Not fantastically, um, but they are a very good side. And they beat us 3-1 earlier in the season. We're going to have to be at our best to get a result today, dear boys. Let's go out there. It's the Italian Cup, so I'm not too worried about it. I would like to get, hopefully, into the finals. I would like to get a domestic cup win in our books. But if we can't, we can't. Uh, let's get in the opposition instructions and do some tinkering. Come on then, boys. We owe Lazio after what happened last time. And uh, hopefully we can get ourselves a win. First highlight of the game comes 10 minutes in. It's a throw-in for us in a deep position on that left-hand side. And Belmont picks it up. He's got Munoz. Lovely little player there down the left-hand side. He whips it in. Oh, my. Well, it's went in. I don't mind that at all. Whoever was at the front post should have slotted that one before it got to the defender. But then <laughs> how has he scored the own goal? I do not know. We'll see this in the replay. Nice little through ball by Belmont. Munoz does well to get past his man and get the cross in. Who is that? Baragi hits Jamissi and it goes in. Slozek completely misses it at the front post. But we do get the goal. 1-0. Another highlight now. Lazio in possession on the halfway line. We were pretty highly pressed as we lost the ball there. So we need to be careful of balls over the top. It plays out to Baragi on this left-hand side. Can we get the challenge in? Nope. They played about nicely in the midfield. Parolo over the top for Immobile. He's in behind. Oh, lovely little dink. Absolutely no chance for Marco Sportiello. Nice play by them. Levels things up on the half-hour line. So the first half, pretty drab, to be honest with you. Lazio definitely having the better of it, though. Uh, I am going to tell the boys I'm happy with how they're playing so far. We'll see how they perform in the second. Almada, punt over the top. Lozek's in behind. Oh, he's hit the post. Two tight angles. Strakosha with the second save. It can happen just as easy as that. Lozek went a little bit too far out wide. We have ourselves a free kick. Melagioni plays it in. Ahmed oh, Medzovic was there. Never mind. Throw in for Lazio deep. And now half Baragi plays it in. We get it clear. But Parolo will be the first man to it. Joe Mario, a lovely through ball. Immobile is finding acres of space in behind our defence. And uh, we're fortunate to get away with that one. Giglione, a ball over the top down the right-hand side. Lozek's in behind. Once again, Strakosha with another good save for Lazio. Corner for Lazio. There's definitely another goal in this, without a doubt. And El manages to get a clear barrage. He's got Luis Alberto and acres of space. Oh, lovely little dink. Uh, I'm not even sure. Was it a rub boner? I no, no idea. Biragi tries to whip it in. Giglione blocks. Melagioni sensible with the ball. Finds Thiago Almada who ball over the top for Hlozek. We know he can do it. Can he? Third time of asking. Lovely little ding and Adam Hlozek gets his goal for the game. He's 22nd for the season. Lazio 1, Genoa 2. I think with that said we'll look to make some changes. We're going to get Moise Keane off. We'll bring on Eldo up front for us. Uh, Thomas Belmont on a yellow card. I don't like the look of that so we'll bring on Milan Bedell. Same with uh, Anel. We'll look to get him off as well as Luis Alberto plays in the corner. We'll manage to get it clear. We'll bring on Barashi for Anel. Bedell managed to get this one clear. Jamiti out of Baragi. They've got a lot of men in the box if you can find them. Luis Alberto. Kadarabic is one of them. Ah, oh, Pavel. His first goal of the season. Levels things up at 2 2. Eight minutes to go. Five minutes of injury time is going to go through without incident. Lazio 2, Genoa 2. We'll go on extra time. The last thing we need. We've got a game in a couple of days. <laughs> First highlight of extra time. Oh, Lazio Anderson hits the bar. Is that Andre Anderson who we've been looking at? I think it is. Anderson again bringing the ball out into the midfield for Lazio. Dancing through all of our players. He's making it look easy. Can we get the challenge in? Baragi on this left-hand side. Finds it through to Mariki. Oh, I want to save Sporty Yellow. Can we get it clear? We do eventually. We are going to take off uh, Alcaraz in the centre of midfield and bring on Casata. To hopefully freshen things up. And now they're looking very tired old boys. And he's one of our best players. So I need to keep him fresh. Melagioni. Got the space on the right hand side. Uh, if Milan Bedell can find him. Don't don't lose the ball here. I've seen this too many times. Bedell. Out to Giglione. Bedell picks it up again. On the edge of the area. Spreads the player. To Earhead Munoz on this left hand side. But who gets dispossessed by Anderson. We do keep possession though. Oh, we'll give away possession really sloppily. Immobile is in behind. And Chirio Mobile is the 14th goal of the season. Puts Lazio 3-2 up. We're going to go back attacking. Um, just again. We held possession for about 5 minutes during that highlight. And then David Carmo gives it away. And Lazio break pretty, pretty easily. Kick off for the second half of extra time. We've got. I don't think we've got any more subs. Anyway, we'll uh, stick with things out of the arm. Munoz with a free kick for us. Hopefully, some uh, forward passes can really penetrate the Lazio defence. Instead of messing about with it in the midfield and then giving it away. Giglione down the right-hand side. Plays it out to Munoz. We're really struggling to break down this back five of Lazio. We've got three strikers, so you'd think we'll be able to at least find a pocket of space here. But Giglione's cross is cleared again. I've half got the feeling that this is a Lazio highlight. And we're just uh, 
where you're just the starters, just to warm them up a bit. Oh, Giglione down a pot of space for Almado on the right-hand side. Whips it in. Hlozek's there. Strakosha with another save. Go oh, very attacking for the last five, but uh, it looks like we will be exiting the Italian Cup at the first uh, first knockout round. And here it is. Lazio 3, Genoa 2. Unlucky, boys. It wasn't meant to be. We give Lazio a good game, and they always seem to have the upper hand on us, so we can't be too disappointed, but I would have liked to have got a, a semi or a final. So we've got Fiorentina coming up next, a few days in between. Uh, if there's any transfer activity, I'll let you know, but otherwise I'll see you for Fiorentina. Twice I've had agreed deals with Inter for Esposito, and twice the board have pulled the plug. Now Esposito has signed a new contract. It's going to be so much more difficult to get him over the line now. Um, <laughs> well, I'm going to keep trying. I want Sebastiano Esposito in my squad to replace Moise Keane when he returns from loan. But um, that's disappointing to see pop up in my little news feed. Only one change going into today's game against Fiorentina from the Lazio game. Barashi comes in at centre-back for Carmo, who is unfortunately suspended for today's game. Let's get a kick-off. Fiorentina only sitting in 13th this season, not doing as well as they have historically. Um, so hopefully we can do some damage to them. We are away from home though, so uh, we'll have to wait and see how we perform. Let's get into it. First highlight of the game is a corner for Fiorentina. Valero plays it in. And Igor gets his head on it for his first goal of the season and puts Fiorentina 1-0 up. Lovely. Oh, is this the start of the downturn? We've been performing, I think we've won about 10 league games in a row. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is maybe the turning point. I don't think we're quite as good as our form, recent form has suggested, so this could be the correction as Fiorentina come down the right-hand side. If we can nick the ball in here, though, we're not going to. Bacchowie's, Bacchowie, why is he off Fiorentina? He puts Fiorentina 2-0 up. We are sinking without a trace. Can we get ourselves back into this game? Alcaraz with the corner in, it's cleared. Hlozek. Will be the first man to the ball. Finds Belmont. Lots of space from uh, Amedzovic on this left-hand side. What's he doing there? Barashi. Back out to Unel. Can Has he got a cross? I don't think he has. Belmont to Alcaraz on the edge. Finds Almada in the box. He's, well, that is very unsel unselfish of Thiago Almada. He crosses it to the back post for Moise Keane. Who gets his 10th goal of the season. We get ourselves back into this. We'll see this again during the replay. I thought Almada was going to go for goal. And from a tight angle, not be able to bury it. But he chips a back post beautifully and Moise Keane buries it. Fantastic play. We have massively improved since going 2-0 down. The only way was up, to be honest, after that. But uh, hopefully we can get back level before half-time. Barashi to Manoz on this left-hand side. He's got Moise Keane there in a pocket of space. But Melagioni sitting in between the defence and the midfield as well. We'll play it about nicely. Munoz, can you, can you whip the ball in? No, he's not whipping the ball in. We'll play him patient. This is what we're set up to do, even though it frustrates me massively. Belmont. Melagioni slips it through. Flozek, what a challenge that is by the centre-half. Flozek was through. Surely would have scored as well. Milenkovic with a free kick for Fiorentina. Three minutes before half-time. Rafinha can bring the ball forward for Fiorentina. He's in a pot of space. Sport yellow with the easy save. Looking at the match stats, it's a pretty even game. If anything, we should probably be ahead, but we are behind. So let's J the boys back up. And hope that they can bounce back in the second half. Seems like if Hlozek has a poor game, we have a poor game. 60 minutes gone, we have a first highlight of the second half. Sardella, ugh, rubbish, rubbish pass to Almada. Thankfully, Fiorentina can't keep possession and we can recycle it to Alcaraz in the centre. Back out to Sardella. Nice little run there by Almada down the right-hand side. Back out, can he whip it in? Get past his man and whips it. It's cleared by Fiorentina. Belmont out of Melagioni, who has picked up a knock. During this highlight, we're going to have to take him off Sardella again. Down the right-hand side for Almada. Beats it off side trap. Plays in Alcaraz. Oh, he should be scoring that. Dragowski with a save. We're going to bring on uh, Casata for Melagioni in the centre of the park. Come on, boys. Let's go a very attack then. Let's demand some more. We, we don't deserve to get beaten this game. Give us a point. Highlight now. Five minutes to go. Fiorentina with... Oh, they get a penalty. I don't bloody believe it, man. VR is checking it. Come on, it's going to be a penalty. I already know it is. Penalty has been awarded. Fiorentina have the opportunity to go 3-1 up and kill this game. It's Vlahovic against Sport Yellow. Come on, Marco. Can you be the saviour? He, he bloody can. We're still in this. Time is just ticking away, though. We do have a highlight. We're on the ball. Two minutes to go. We've gone much more direct. We've made a couple of changes. Brought on Giglione at right back. And uh, Eldor up front for Thiago Almada, who was struggling a little bit. And we played about in the defence in the midfield. Alcaraz, come on. 
A little bit more pace, boys. Giglione out on this right-hand side. Oh, he whips it in. Moise Keane's there. Moise Keane. Oh, Dragowski. He must be on a 9.2. We do have one final highlight. Please let it be for us. Moise Keane. Come on. We should have. We, sh we should be level and even ahead in this game. Moise Keane gets dispossessed. We'll have a look at the match stats here. Oh, we should be doing better. We should be at least getting a point out of this. 20 seconds remain on Munoz to Belmont. I'm not even sure if this is a highlight or it's just the game messing with my head. The cross is too far. Eldor can't get his head on it. It's whipped back in by Eldor. Cleared. Belmont. Don't blow the full-time whistle, ref. We're enjoying ourselves. Munoz. Come on, whip it in. He gets past his man. Come on. He whips it. Oh, it's cleared by Milenkovic. That's surely it. Yeah, that's it. Fiorentina 2, Genoa 1. Two defeats. Not happy. Even with that defeat, though, we do remain in second place in the Serie A table. We're four points behind Juve now and uh, still only one point ahead of Napoli in third. But the gap's been closed in terms of fifth and it could be closed even further as we have played more games than the teams in and around us there. If we look at the schedule, we'd won eight games on the bounce before today. <laughs> and now we're back-to-back -back defeats. Never mind, we've got some... Um, not, not easier games. We've got Roma and Milan. But after that, we've got a few easier games to try and reclaim our form. Uh, you've probably seen that on the message. We're sending out the new Portuguese striker out on loan to Carrarese in Serie C. Uh, just for the rest of this season, see how he gets on. We have agreed a deal with a number of those 16-year-olds who are going to join us at the end of the season. And we still have a lot more uh, who could potentially join us as well. In terms of the next episode, then, boys, when are we coming back for? Maybe Atlanta Udinese Maybe Verona and Napoli. That could be the better option. If we're still in and around that second, third place conversation, Napoli could be an absolutely huge game. But anyway, lads, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.